So we are going to um, go through the classroom rituals, but I want to just kind of talk in a little more detail about what's in your classroom closet or cabinet. We lost a couple of people. Where'd they go? I think they were changing emails. <laughs> are you guys coming down?
bringing the time, it's lighting the chalice, sharing your opening words together, it's doing the wristband ritual, it's doing the check-in question that Barry referenced earlier, um, and you have the option of doing a check-in question or sharing joys and sorrows from the previous week. And then it's the closing wristband ritual and the closing words. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not like it's really long, but it's a substantive part of time of your class. So, um, as I mentioned, the rituals, they provide consistency from week to week that I think is really valuable. Um, I think that they help to create a culture of respect in the classroom. Um, it's a really nice transition into this space. Um, you know, they've been sitting in there in the auditorium for a while, and um, this is a way for them to kind of get reacquainted with their group. Um, with the new wristband ritual, it's a way of kind of um, setting the expectations each week for how we're going to be in community together. And I think an important piece of it also is that it helps to develop a UU identity. You know, that it's this is. They're not going to do anything like this anywhere else except here. This is distinctly UU. So uh, it gives them sort of this shared UU language and experience that I think is really important. Um, and in, in our little ways, we are really trying to create sacred space for them. And um, we don't have a lot of opportunities to do that, but the rituals are one way that we can kind of create a sacred space for them. And um, I think what you bring to that equation is really important. Like if you take that seriously and you really present this as a sacred experience and those um, relics of our faith as being sacred objects, that they will embrace that as well. But it's, it's putting those expectations forward and expecting them to rise to that I think is really important. Um, and I think it's uh, powerful. I think it can be really powerful, and I think um, that it can go a long way. My hope is that if we take that really seriously, and with the risk and ritual, that it will help kind of cut off some of the behavioral things that can be so frustrating. So um, I hope that you can become comfortable with the idea of creating sacred space in, in whatever ways that you do and that you bring to the ritual. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about this now, but <clears throat> I just wonder, so sometimes when I've been a parent helper, I've seen that like the joys and sorrows or a lot of these rituals are, a lot of children decide, oh, I don't, I'm not going to participate. Mm -hmm. And if one child does it, then it's three or four in a row. And this is like four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds that I've seen. And mm -hmm. I wonder if you have any um, opinion about... <sighs> how much of a requirement it should be, and, and maybe it's just the way of phrasing it, like, now we're all going to put on the wristband, versus, if you want to put on the wristband, you can put a wristband on. <laughs> and if, if, it's, if you would like to sit or share a joy or sorrow, feel free, but if you don't want to, you know, you don't have to. Or, like, how, have you had conversations with teachers in the past about yeah. just how much, um, I don't know if I should say pressure, but but setting an expectation, how is that actually done, mm -hmm. you know? For the wristband, I would say everyone needs to put the wristband on. And there are some kids who, um, you know, for whatever reasons, they need to kind of just sit off to the side. But yeah. I think the expectation yeah. still yeah. has to be that the wristband is our covenant with each other, and they have to put the wristband on. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a parent of one of the kids who, <laughs> yeah. she was, you know, from, yeah. I think, Thursday on, she shut down, she, and it really helped. And at one point, I think I came to you and said, can you please ask the teachers to ask everyone right. to contribute something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that she's not singled out, but that everyone mm -hmm. does it. And it really helped her to get to know people in her class mm -hmm. when she started talking and doing things. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is helpful to bring them out a little bit. Yeah. That seems like a covenant, too, to, to say, well, I'm not going to do it. It's, it kind of goes against you then the whole purpose of being in the class. You're not going to be kind, be respectful. I mean, those are real fundamentals. Yeah, so right. right. I think it's a good expectation to have um, for that they participate. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, it's not like we're going to kick them out of class if they don't. Yeah. But, you know, if you have someone that seems kind of continually reluctant, 
maybe the next time they're in class say, do you have any ideas about what we could use as a check-in question? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's something that you would like to know about the other kids in the class? And maybe giving them a little more ownership. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will you continue to have the aids for us that, um, you know, that have those words written out that we can hold up? Yeah. That will be in the closet? They're up here. Oh, it's, oh, there it is. Opening the door. Okay. And then the wristband ritual. Right there. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. 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 Other questions? Yeah. I was just going to say, from my experience teaching the younger kids, I really like your idea of directing at each kid and inviting them because I think you're right. When they start to like pass the chalice without like with yeah. not being able to look up, but just sort of yeah. take it and pass it. So if almost the teacher, you know, each time was, you know, good morning, Naomi. What's your joy and sorrow? Good morning. Say that. Yes. What's your joy? You know, so that they, yeah, so they're being invited to the conversation mm -hmm. when the yeah. child has passed to them. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. work really well. Yes. <coughs> yeah, that's great. Um, other questions? Yeah. Um, what's the most common thing that you see students doing when they're in the classroom? Like, what's the most common thing that you see students doing when they're in the classroom? Like, what's the most common thing that you see students doing when they're in the classroom? Like, what's the most common thing that you see students doing when they're in the classroom? Like, what's the most common thing that you before service begins, to set up, get, get everything together. Um, what you'll do is you'll come and you'll take out your chalice and chime box. Some some places it might say, no, I think they all say chalice and chime. But yeah. So in here, we have every chalice looks different, they're all unique. Um, here's your chalice. This is the talking stick. Every box has a little fabric for creating their altar, and every box has a chime. Okay? So um, you'll get everything set up on the floor. All of these classrooms are prepared for you with a clear floor. We, that's the default. There'll be a table or two that's set up like this off to the side. Um, but the default is that you have a clear floor to sit on. So if you have any uh, knee issues or anything like that, you know, feel free to take a chair. Um, but um, basically, the rest of the people will be sitting on the floor. Um, so you'll get that set up. And then the kids will get released from the worship service. They'll come in here. I think it's kind of nice to have a teacher that's sitting on the floor already who can kind of welcome them in and start talking to them. Um, it's up to you if you want to take attendance as they arrive or if you want to kind of just wait until things are underway and then somebody, you know, takes care of marking out the attendance sheet. Um, it might make more sense to just let everyone filter in and start your circle. Um, so they'll come in and then you'll ring your chime for the centering moment. Um, you'll welcome any visitors or parent helpers and this is in your binder so you don't have to remember this. Um, welcome any visitors and your parent helper. Select the child to light the chalice for the day. Then you'll read your opening words, which are hanging on the board here, and light your chalice. And then you'll do the wristband ritual. Um, and every, every class will have a basket of wristbands like this. And it'll be a process of passing this around. So um, I'm the teacher. I start. Um, we have the words that we say as part of the um, uh, wristband ritual, and you know, for the for the little kids, for the K1 kids, it makes sense more sense to just have them repeat after you. So you know, in this sacred space, and then they can say in the sacred space through our actions and our words, and they can say through our actions. And words. For the older kids, you probably they could just read what's on there, and, and it shouldn't take too long for them to memorize it. Um, so what I would do is I would hold this out to Harry. Harry would take her wristband or two, put it on if he can, and then they have small hands, and then take the basket, and then he would hold it, hold it up to Kelda, and it would go yeah. around and around like that until only one in the room has a wristband. And this may seem like a small thing, but I'm going to believe that it's a big thing. That <laughs> um, just that sort of that. But the goal here is not only to say that these, the values that are expressed on the words of the wristband are important to us, but it's also it's just a way of connecting with each other, however briefly, 
to look someone in the eye and, and offer them something, and then for them to offer something to someone else. It's a small token, but it's an important token, and I think it creates a stronger sense of community in the classroom to be able to share like that. And then they kind of do the reverse process at the end. So that's sort of where that um, the whole idea from the wristband ritual was born of, this, this desire to have the kids connecting in a more meaningful way together. So when I first came up with that, I had people putting the wristbands on each other, and that became complicated. <laughs> it was a little too ambitious. <laughs> but, um, but still, being able to just like present the basket, I think, is a nice way of just connecting. Okay. Um, so you do that. So now you have lit your chalice. You've said your opening words. You've said your ritual, your wristband ritual words. Then you do your check-in or your joys and sorrows. Um, and I ask that teachers always write up the agenda for the day. I think that visual is really important for a lot of kids. Um, it's really important for a lot of adults. <laughs> um, and uh, so everyone want you to put that on their dry erase board. Um, so go over what the agenda is for the day. And then before you move into your activity, to take, so this all, you'll see, is going to be on the floor. Um, and for the first couple of weeks, I really encourage you to emphasize that these are sacred objects. I think we've said that, I'll say it again. Um, that we, in a very uh, sacred and respectful way, we then move those items off of the floor, and each room will have a triangle table, and then you'll set up your little altar on the triangle table. Okay? Sound good? And you can enlist the kids to help you with that, um, as long as they're going to do it respectfully. Okay. And then you go into your lesson plan, and then at the end of the lesson, so you have to, this can be tricky because you get swept up in what you're doing, and it's fun and it's exciting, but um, really try to be intentional about saving time for the closing rituals because it's a, a nice way to come to closure on that day. So you gather again in a circle, um, you say, you ask that, or you say, we had fun talking about, um, what's a holiday? Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. We had fun talking about Kwanzaa today. What was your favorite thing about what we did today? And just give them a chance to sort of reflect on uh, what, what, what they really enjoyed. And maybe ask them, like, so, so what do you think you'll most remember when you leave here? Uh, to think about what was most important to them. Um, and then you do the wristband return ritual. Now it's time to return the wristbands to the basket. Um, and you, you know, I think it would be great if you can comment on any ways that you saw them living out these ideas during the class session to reinforce that. And then you say the return words, which is thank you for sharing this space and time with me. I return this wristband now, but I carry your kindness, gentleness, patience, and respect wherever I go. And then I would hold up the basket to Harry, and he would give me the wristband back. <laughs> and then he would hold it out for Kelda, and so on and so forth. And then you say your closing words together, which are behind Mia. While we are apart, may we be good friends to all we meet. May we remember the things we learned and did together. And may we know peace. Go now and be peace now. Yeah. And that's the rituals. Any questions about that? Okay. So let's um, let's do it. So we're gonna set up a little. Um, so I'm gonna put this in the center of the in the center of the circle and keep the chime close to you. And we'll keep this close to you. Okay, so you welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm looking forward to our time together. We're going to start out by ringing our chime so that we can all become present in this room together. And um, if you'd like, you to close your eyes. And then when you can't hear the sound anymore, raise your hand. Thank you.
you. So I want to welcome our parent helper, Beth, today. We're really happy to have your help here. And our visitor, Sandy, who's here for the second time. We're glad that you came back today. We're happy to have you here. Um, we're going to start with our opening words. So, um, Barry, would you mind lighting the chalice for us? Yes. <laughs> and together we'll read our words. It doesn't light. <laughs> <laughs> <Does it work? laughs> That's the flexibility. We're gonna, yeah. That's right. Well, just so you know, there are extras in. <laughs> Thanks for discovering it doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Thanks for nothing, Barry. <laughs> This chalice to celebrate Unitarian Universalism. This is the church of the open mind. This is the church of the loving heart. This is the church of the helping hands. Together we care for our earth and then work for peace and friendship in our world. Those of you who have been teaching, teaching a lot, I'm looking at you, Karen, Sandy. Oh, sorry. Kathy, do you usually hold hands for that? No. Or do you have well, hey, these are different words than we have. Yes, yeah, so you've advanced now. You're, you're in the new wing. Okay. <laughs> it's they're very similar except for the very end. So we keep them shorter for the younger kids. Um, you don't have to hold hands. We actually, it probably makes more sense to do it at the end. We usually just do peace. With okay. Yeah. Like, so you could. Let's do that. Let's do that. Work for peace and And then during cold season, just don't help. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to start with our wristband ritual, and um, and I just want to remind you all that our wristbands are sacred objects, they're an important part of what our community believes together, and so um, this is our way, this is our promise to each other when we do our wristband ritual, we're promising to treat each other with respect, to be kind, to be gentle, to be patient. And part of that is keeping the wristband on your wrist during class so that we're respecting its importance to who we are while we're here. Um, yeah, so let's start with that. And I'm going to um, offer a wristband to Harry. And we're going to start saying our, our wristband ritual words together. and then. Harry, after you put on your wristband, if you could offer one to Kelda, and Kelda, after you put on your wristband, if you could offer one to Hillary, and we'll just go around the circle as we say our words. In this sacred space, through our actions and our words, I promise to be kind, be gentle, be patient, and respect others. Today's 
checking question is, what is something about yourself that you're looking forward to sharing with your class? What's something about yourself that you're looking forward to sharing with your class? And this is our talking stick. And does anyone know the rule about the talking stick? Only the person holding it can talk. So there's no side conversations. We want to take time to learn what each one of us thinks. So pay attention to whoever has the stick. Something about myself. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to bring some of the artwork I do with me and share. I love to sing, and so I hope that we'll make music together as part of our class. Um, I am hoping to have something um, exciting happening this year, so if that happens, I will be sharing it with my classmates. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned, yes. <laughs> uh, I love Bible stories, so I'm excited to be teaching the Bible. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing some whimsy with the children. <laughs> uh, we have a session on bats, so I get to share my excitement about bats. <laughs> Great. Good to know about <laughs> I'm looking forward to the puppets and masks that we'll get to do. I'm looking forward to the choir starting back in September. Mm -hmm. I love to read stories, so I'm looking forward to reading stories in the class. I'm looking forward to um, helping all the kids feel like they're really included in the class and that they all um, are celebrated here. I love learning about different cultures and holidays. We get to talk about a lot of cultures. Um, I am looking forward to bringing my patients to the kids. Mm -hmm. I like you looking forward to a lot of different cultures. I've had three kids go through it and holidays was their favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done a lot of cultural exchanges over the last few years and so I'm looking forward to bringing some of that to my kids. Let's say I, I like to play with kids this age. <laughs> um, especially get really silly and musical and all that. So looking forward to being surrounded by all that energy. <laughs> um, I enjoy traditions and it would be neat to see how they the holidays and how the kids build their own. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you over the course of the next eight months. So, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. This is our agenda. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is our activity. Our closing ritual. Wasn't that fast? <laughs> Um, so we had fun today talking about what we're all going to bring to um, to class this year. What was your favorite thing that you heard? <laughs> I live in here. Go with. Help me out. <laughs> I really enjoyed hearing that Barry likes bats because we have a lot of bats in our building. <laughs> so now I'm going to call Barry and say, Ah! <laughs> Yeah. 
show out more. Thank you. Okay, and then finally we're going to say our closing words together. So why don't we stand up and um, hold hands for this. While we are apart, may we be good friends for all we meet. May we remember the things we learned and do together. And may we know peace and go now with peace in our hearts. And I'll send around this light sweet. Did you do that? I'm sorry, I was supposed to. <laughs>